what is an argument? An argument is a stance or a position that you take on an issue over which there is a certain amount of controversy. This means that you can imagine a reasonable person arguing the opposite stance from the one that you're taking. All arguments in this way are opposable. An argument is made up of three parts, a claim, reasons that you give to back up that claim, and then evidence that you give to back up those claims or reasons. A claim, the core of your argument, is an assertion that somebody wants to prove. But there are certain types of assertions, certain types of statements that make for poor claims and thus poor arguments. For example, a statement of fact makes for a poor claim. If you were to say, for example, that The Daily Show with Trevor Noah used to air on Comedy Central, it told pretty recently, you're not making an arguable claim. It's a fact that The Daily Show aired on that network. But if you were to say that The Daily Show aired on Comedy Central and as such function more as satire, right, as something that's meant to poke fun of actual news rather than actual news or hard news, you're making a claim. Do you hear the difference there? Issues that hinge on personal faith and beliefs don't make good claims either. Matters of faith are so personal and subjective that it's hard to convince the other party of the validity of your belief. Matters of simple opinion and personal taste also work poorly as claims. I like to call these nobody's spaghetti sauce is better than mine types of arguments. Definitions of best vary, and it's hard for a community to come to consensus about what makes a nice red sauce. So to say that mine's better is not an arguable claim. But if I were to say that homemade sauce is a better value than store-bought sauce, or that a homemade sauce is healthier than store-bought sauce, I'd be taking a stance that I could support with good reasons and with evidence. So let me break it down. Good reasons. All claims need to be supported with reasons that your audience will accept. Writers often present their reasons in statements beginning with words like because or as a result. So in the example that I just gave, the claim that homemade sauce is better than, is, the claim is that homemade sauce is better than store-bought. Why? Because, and this is one of my reasons, because it's a better value. Why else? Because it's healthier. So those are two different reasons, right? My claim is it's better. Um, why? Well, it's a better value. Why else? It's healthier. And you can keep going on with the why game. Why is it a better value? Because it costs less to buy ingredients, especially when you already have stuff like in your pantry, garlic and spices, um, than it does to buy jarred sauce. Uh, what makes it healthier? Well, you can kind of control what goes into it. So if you, know, you want to buy um, organic stuff, you can do that and control that, although that makes price go up, of course. Um, but you, know, you could also control sodium or sugar or you know, whatever it is. So you could easily continue to play the Y game um, and back up your reasons with more reasons. So the question though is how do you know that the reasons you give are good ones or valid ones? Um, and you know because of evidence. Evidence, not just for these kinds of papers, but for in all the papers that you will write for college, um, can come from a variety of sources. So things like facts, statistics, examples, testimonials, um, anecdotes, case studies, uh, visuals, all of these things are common kinds of evidence. In the example of my red sauce, evidence could be a cost comparison of my sauce versus bottled sauce. That would be evidence, right, to back up the claim um, that mine is a better value, right? The, how do we know it's a better value? Well, we know because we can check uh, prices at grocery stores and see. 
And then also another one of my reasons to back up my claim uh, that nobody's better yourself is better than mine uh, it would be that it is healthier. And how do we know that it's healthier? Well, we could compare fat content, sodium, general nutritional value, right? So that's an example of evidence that we would use to back up the reasons that we're giving to substantiate a big claim, a main claim. So another way to think about all of this is that all good arguments contain the following elements. The what or the claim itself, right? This is kind of the central core of the argument. The how or the why, um, this is the part that lets your readers know why you're arguing what you're arguing, right? Um, and that's kind of your, those are your because reasons. And then you also want to think about the so what. The so what asks you to think about the larger significance of what it is that you're asserting. Like, why does it matter in the world, whatever it is that you're arguing? So for my example, the spaghetti sauce, I know I'm belaboring this point about the spaghetti sauce, um, but in my example, my what would be the pasta sauce is better than a store, my pasta sauce that I make at home is better than a store-bought sauce. My how or my why, um, these are my reasons, right? Because it's cheaper and better for you, right? Because it's cheaper, because it's better for you. Um, and then my evidence is I, I demonstrate this, right? I show that it's cheaper and better for you um, by comparing cost and nutritional value. Uh, why might this matter? So this is the, really the question um, for my, um, if this is like my thesis statement, if this is my claim and reason, um, I might have a hard time with this particular aspect of it. I need to think about why um, my claim might matter. So I could make an argument maybe for like, um, you know, buying locally. Um, maybe I want to make an argument ultimately for like, you know, not only is it healthier and cheaper, but it brings together, cooking my sauce, you know, brings families together, right? It's, it's a unifier in other ways. Um, so here are some common argument pitfalls. Your topic might be too broad. So remember here, uh, you have like, I think, three to five pages to make your argument. Usually that's what you have in college papers, five, maybe seven pages. Um, that's not a lot. It seems like a, a lot. Um, and so I think that students often pick very broad topics instead of um, going narrow and then getting deep into sort of the narrow topic that you have chosen. So um, you want to be able to support thoroughly your assertion, right? Your main claim. A problem students often fall into is that they choose something that's kind of inconsequential, right? You should try to pick a topic that a reasonable person would be interested in. So a subject that makes your um, reader say, so what? is probably not worth pursuing. So, you know, like my um, spaghetti sauce example, we need to try to find something that makes it, that makes it matter. And then another pitfall that folks fall into often is that the argument is obvious, right? Um, arguments should never um, elicit a no doubt response in their readers. This is why they shouldn't be connected to facts, right? Because facts are provable. Um, <coughs> stating the population, of New York City is not an argument, right? You're just stating a fact. You want to say something provocative or provide a fresh perspective on something that somebody has said before. And that is the end of the slideshow about arguments.